right, hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And our good friend Antonio from Tarraspania was in with uh, the folks from Vodegas Vinicola. And uh, this is a winery in Rioja. The first wine I, you know, looked at these guys and I said, is this wine good? I mean, you know, the Spanish whites, it was 07 vintage. A lot of times they like their wine a little more oxidized than the rest of the world does. But this wine just took a little time to open up. It's a blend of Viura, Malvasia, and Granacha Blanca. Uh, Granacha Blanca and Muscatel. And, um, well, you know, like I said, it was it seemed like it was a little oxidized at first and maybe a little acetic as well. But, uh, you know, it's a somewhat evolved bouquet, but uh, that's what you expect from a 2007. Really almond, kind of nutty bouquet and uh, uh, bread dough, biscuity notes to the peach and apricot-like fruits. And these are from vineyards located in Rioja Alta, which is one of considered the best area in Rioja. But this lovely vanilla orange creamsicle note started to come out in this wine as it opened up. And just the richness on the palate also seemed to gain weight. And that oxidation, you didn't seem to notice it as much when these other things started to come out. And uh, still nice freshness and kind of a little reminiscent of sherry to me and that with that oxidativeness showing up but like I said I really started to like this wine the longer it sat in the glass uh, at first I didn't think it was good but that's the reason why you have to let a wine stretch its legs after it's been in the bottle for five six years or whatever all right next up we have the 2011 Bodegas Vinicola Vigna de los Valles line and uh, this is kind of the entry-level cuvee for them all organically produced so I guess that means all the wines at this property are organically produced because if these wines are, well, it's all state bottle juice. doesn't say it on the higher end wines. Kind of interesting, you know, today people are getting away from that stigma that uh, expensive wines with organic on them mean there's some kind of kookily marketed project and not a serious wine, you know. The greatest producers in the world today are making their wines organically or making sure that the vineyards are sustainably farmed, not poisoning the fruit. Hey, pop quiz, is poison bad for you? Yes, poison is bad. Anyways, these are nice little wines, so Tempranillo Granacho blend the first one 2011 $13 a bottle you can get organically made wines for short money you don't have to spend a bunch actually those pesticides actually cost more money to put on the vines anyways lots of ripe cherry fruit here strawberry fruit and flowers a little bit of mocha and some peppery spice really nice freshness here a light wine but really drinking nicely and like I said for that price a good little bottle of wine the 2007 Bodegas Vinicola Real Viña Los Valles uh, this is, um, well, it's a blend of 70% Tempranillo, 30% Grenache. Spends 15 months in uh, a blend of French and American oak. They do like the American oak there in Spain, but they're starting to use more French oak. And uh, this wine's got some dried meats notes. That's the little older vintage here, 2007. Red cherry, plum fruit, some nice barnyardy notes. So showing a little bit of development here on the nose. Some dried tobacco spice, really nice concentration and depth on the tongue. Some round tannins, a very good little wine at 19 bucks. A lot of great value coming out of Spain today. Wow, Bodegas Vinicola, Cueva del Manja, Rioja Coseca. And uh, wow, so exciting sounding names here, but uh, Coseca is just an entry level wine. You know, you have Crianza, you have Reserva, you have Gran Reserva. These all relate to the amount of time the wine spends in oak. Nothing about the quality, nothing about the age of the vines. You know, so a lot of people getting away from these uh, labels and just calling their wines Coseca, like this wine, which in the past would have been considered a very cheap wine. $31.50, not very cheap, actually climbing up in price. This wine spends 10 months in oak, 100% Tempranillo, really fresh and fruity wine on the nose still with wild strawberry fruit, fr hints of fresh flowers, a touch of cocoa spice there as well. A big and chewy wine on the tongue, but it's a ripe and round here, really easy drinking style, a good hand of acidity, holding things together, lovely freshness, that tobacco spice, some of those wood tannins showing on this finish along with some dried meat. A very good bottle of wine. Get a little expensive here, though. And this $67 2000 Mungus Reserva. Wow, this wine was excellent, though. And, well, I mean, I don't know if for the money, I might as well just splurge and go for the $120 bottle. Do you have anything better than that? No, sorry, this is the best wine that we have, sir. It's $120. What's the difference between that and the $60 wine? Well, it is a step up in quality. I would have to say uh, only 12,000 bottles produced, so smaller production there. And they use 100% French oak. Uh, both of these wines, though, very good. And, uh, well, the first one I mentioned here is... Uh, Graciano and Granacha also in the blend. But, uh, you know, the 2000 Mangas Reserva selection, definitely a step up. The best wine they produce at this winery. And, you know, like I said, if you think more expensive is better, 
not all times is it exponentially better. In the case of this wine, definitely the best wine on the table tonight. A lot of dark berry fruit here, an array of dark spices, fresh earth, vanilla, some graphite. You definitely notice the complexity in this wine is taking up a few notches. 2004, also a great vintage for Rioja. These 2004s are going to be around 10, 20, 30. I don't know, we had that 1950 Berberana at our vintage Spanish tasting, which was out of this world, and it was from an average to below average producer. So really exci more, more excited about this wine as time goes on. But a candidate that you want to sell her uh, has a lot of firm tannin still in this wine. Quite youthful layers of spice, dark cocoa, and dark earth on the finish. Most excellent juice. That's what we had the, with our friends from Bodegas Vinicola and Antonio from Terra Spagna. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.